WP Get Web Dev Tutorials for All User Levels. All right, guys. So yesterday I posted this question in the Bricks community. Um, what I'm looking for is I'm creating a tutorial site for Bricks, and I'm going to have multiple authors. And what I want to happen is for each tutorial, the author gets an attribution. You can click on the author's um, profile, we'll show you their bio and any tutorials that are done by that author. When I was looking in the dynamic fields, I could not find any dynamic data to link to the author's uh, archive page. It turns out there isn't one, so you can do it by PHP, which, uh, um, which I've done. Um, and thank you to, uh, hopefully I say this correctly, is it uh, Yawns or Jorns? Um, who made an effort to help me with this and came up with something pretty similar to what I've done as well. So uh, thanks for the effort there. Now, the concept of what I'm looking for is, so here's a just a very mock-up um, site that I've probably put up a couple of times of where I'm working on. I'm just getting a chance to work on it again now. So I will end up having a long here probably a list of authors um, and you can click on those authors and go to their profile and see their tutorials um, and underneath that just a generic list of whatever's new. Um, so for the moment it's just me and what I want to happen is when you click on one of these uh, tutorials and uh, no critiques on the design of the stage, this is just mock-up stuff um, so that uh, you know we can work on the functionality and then we'll come back and look at the look and feel stuff. So what I want to happen is at the top left here, I want an author box, giving an attribution to the author. Uh, then we obviously got the description of the tutorial, a video, and if there's any video, uh, sorry, if there's any tutorial content, that'll be below here. So your steps, your code, all that sort of stuff. Now, the issue I was having was with this author attribution here, with that button. So I want to click on that, and it goes to the author's archive, uh, their photo, their bio, maybe even a logo for the business, and their tutorials underneath here. Now, in Bricks, there is no author URL or URI uh, dynamic field. So if we have a look in Bricks, and I have a look at the button, uh, I'm going to take that dynamic data out there, and we look at our available dynamic data, there is an author there, there's name, bio, email, website, and avatar. There is no URI to their archive page. And looking further through all this, there is no archive URI link. So the way I've done this is using a PHP, and this is actually really awesome with Bricks. Using the advanced PHP dynamic data, it just sticks an echo and curly braces, and then you put a colon, and then you put in a function name, PHP function name, and whatever you return from that function um, will end up in here. So let's have a look at the actual function. So there we go, code box. So I've got a PHP function here. I've called it wp-get uh, post author URI. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that in as my function that I'm going to call for my dynamic data. Okay, that's all I have to do here to get that link. Now in my code box, um, I'm basically getting the global post, so the current post in the current loop. Um, I'll come back to this uh, debugging stuff here. Um, and I'm setting the queried post to whatever that current post is. Unless an ID has been provided, if an ID has been provided, we get a post with that ID and assign that to the queried post. So this allows us to either just call this function with no properties and we get the author URI for the current post in the loop or we can specify the post ID and then it'll get the author URI for that post, uh, that specific post. Now we're calling a WordPress function get author posts uh, using the queried post post author. Pretty simple, so that's all we do, and that results in, let me just bring that up again, 
that results in if you if I point my mouse here and look down the bottom where the actually let's just link I'll just click on it so it results in this URI be from that WordPress function okay so that works very very simple to do now the next part I was just going to quickly show you is bugfoo so I use bugfoo a lot um, and it's a really really cool plugin so you just install bugfoo console debugger it's absolutely free um, turn it on okay you get a little red box up here to say that it's on and what that allows you to do and you need to check if you're going to leave this here you need to check if the class exists because if it doesn't exist and you call this it's just going to throw an error and what I found with the uh, the way the dynamic data calls work um, you don't see an error you just see it just doesn't work um, so you, you're not getting any feedback there may be some debugging you can enable in Bricks so I haven't got to that part yet so there may be something that you can do which enables you to see that uh, but without that you, uh, you just it just doesn't work so what I'm doing here is getting the if the bugfoo class exists I'm calling bugfoo log the post and I'm telling it not to output the stack trace because all I, I know this is coming from a dynamic function here through um, WP code box I don't need to know where it's called from so I don't need to output all that data so by doing that on let's go back to have a look at uh, the single page so we're gonna have a look at the single have a look at my console the control f5 and uh, it's probably a bad example because I've got a lot of other stuff in the post I'm gonna pick a different one I'll pick just this first one here because I don't have a whole bunch of content under that okay there we go not outputting there's some weird caching I've got happening here let me pick another one so I'll pick this one here I'm not getting any there we go yeah you got some weird caching so I just did a control F5 again got some weird stuff happening with WP rocket it's not meant to do any caching when an admin's logged in um, but it is doing some weird things. So if you've got WP Rocket, you might want to disable it while you're doing any uh, editing or work in Bricks because it does get in the way for some reason. So that bug foo, where are we? Bug foo, bug foo log post gives us this here in our um, DevTools console. All right, so. Uh, so let's change that to bugfoo log let's do get current user okay so we'll call the wordpress get current user function save that and just do a control f5 not getting anything uh, let's try a different function. Get adjacent post. Save that. There we go. So it's got the next post. So it's a really, really cool utility to have when you're writing these custom dynamic functions or any dynamic PHP that you're going to use in the uh, front end in uh, in WordPress bugfoo is so good you, you don't have to echo out or save error logs or anything like that out to a file and then check the files bugfoo echoes it straight out to your console uh, and then you can just look at it in the uh, DevTools console so it's a really really cool function for debugging and working out what you're going to do with um, all this sort of stuff here. So I'm just going to put that back there as it was so I can use this. Go back and turn my bug foo off. You don't want this live. Okay, and now when we do a refresh, there's no output there. All right, so that's really, really cool. Um, I hope that's something that uh, helps you with uh, creating your own 
functions for dynamic data and uh, happy coding.